we can get a recording of this so that we don't miss a word that happens here. We can't rely on social media these days. Things go missing all the time. <laughs> so um, if it's okay with you, I want to I want to just deep dive straight into, um, you know, some the realness of conscious parenting and what that really means because I feel like over recent years, the idea of conscious parenting has become almost a cliche. It's like a little sentence that people throw around these days without really connecting with the true meaning of, of what it is to be a conscious parent. And, you know, there's, there's such an awareness, particularly within the conscious communities of, um, of trauma and particularly of generational trauma and how that's handed down through the generations and to our children. And this is something I personally am really big on. And I would love to hear um, the depth of your perspective here and you know for those of you um, who are on the line listening I mean many of you have been following me for a while and you know that I um, I don't really pull any punches I mean you know we can be pretty upfront, and and those kind of candid conversations I feel you know get to some layers that skirting around the edges don't get to and I'm saying this because if there was a, a dream for my life it would be that that parents truly are conscious. But I would love to hear from you, how do you define the depth of what it means to truly be a conscious parent and for that to not just be some throwaway line? Yeah, well, you know, people resist the depth of it because it's too brutal and it's too um, honest to look in the mirror and accept that at the core of conscious parenting is this idea, is this notion that parenting is about yourself. It's about raising yourself. And if we don't look at ourselves in, a, in an honest, brutal way, then what will happen is that our children will suffer the consequences of that unhealed past that we live from. Most of us are living from our patterns, from our childhood conditioning, which we project and put onto our children without realizing that we are. And they then suffer the consequences of that egoic burden. And our children don't deserve that. Absolutely. So conscious parenting is, is depthful, it's transformational. It's, it's difficult to understand and one needs to really sit uh, and, and grasp it deeply. But at the core, its fundamental principle is that you have to raise yourself. And when you raise yourself, everything changes. You look at your children differently. You handle conflict differently. You are more in your worth. So you don't use your children to fulfill yourself. And uh, you set your children free. Absolutely. Setting them free. And I love that you finished on that point because there's two beliefs that I believe society has encouraged us to buy into that are I mean, I mean, I'll say it bluntly, that are very wrong. And that is, you know, this idea that as parents, that we would do anything for our children. You know, I mean, let me give you one example. I, I mean, I'm sure every parent in Australia haven't got tickets to your event yet. So when you say, oh, I'd do anything for my children, but I don't want to inconvenience myself to go out one night or, you know, I'm happy to spend money drinking beer all weekend on Easter, but oh no, your tickets, you know, come at a price. I mean, this is where we need to call ourselves out. And this is where we need to start with our conscious parenting because it's not true that we would do anything. It's like we, the truth is, what I find is we would, I would do anything for my child so long as it doesn't trigger me. So long as it's within this little confinement of my comfort zone, so long as I don't have to face the depth of my vulnerability, oh, I will show up as this parent that does everything for you. So that's one thing that I would love to hear your perspective on. The other truth that I believe we buy into that is not true is this notion that we love our children unconditionally because we don't. Our, the love we offer them is very much based on conditions. You know, I will love you. I mean, I say, I say to my clients all the time, if you make a list of what love means, what does it look like? You know, it means I listen to you, I hear you, there's no judgment, I have compassion for you, I connect with you, I talk to you, all of those things. And then you look at what you do when your child makes a choice that triggers you or that's out of alignment with you know, one of your own beliefs. And that list of love that you made 
are quite often the first things that you withdraw from your child. Now you judge them. Now you criticize them as though, you know, their whole life's purpose is to make us feel comfortable, you know. Um, so the whole idea of unconditional love isn't really true because we withdraw our love when our child doesn't meet our own needs. And this idea that we would do anything for our child is really not true. And I feel like those are the two yes. very cold, harsh truths that we need to face. So offer us your wisdom on that. Right. So we parents love to be uh, betrothed to this notion of our sanctimonious, angelic kind of God complex. You know, so we think, oh, we would do anything for our kids. So everything we do is out of love because we have been sold this lie that we are these infallible superior creatures who have the only the best intentions and our love is unconditional and untainted with our egoic agenda. So when I first began telling parents uh, that this is not true, that this is a lie, they were very upset with me. And I'm sure right now it may trigger a lot of people and they may be like, what do you mean? I, can, I unconditionally love my, my, my children. And the reason why it's important to understand that we don't unconditionally love them is not to be shamed, not to be blamed and not to feel unworthy. It's to just understand that this is the power of our egoic expectations. We love our children so much as long as they fulfill our egoic expectations. And when they don't, we will withdraw our love, as Holly said. And that's difficult to see because then we've told ourselves another lie that even when we're withdrawing our love, it's because we unconditionally love them, right? So we always have some excuse to continue to unleash our egoic agenda because it's so difficult to be honest with ourselves and say, you know what? The reason I wanted my kid to learn ballet is because I like ballet dancers. Or the reason I wanted my kid to learn a language is because I wanted to always learn a foreign language. It's really hard to own that because we as parents have been told that, hey, everything you do is for the love of your children. So yes. we don't examine it. But conscious parents examine it. Conscious parents go deep inside and go, okay, what is my agenda here? Would I really do anything for my kids? What does that really mean? And actually, we should be honest with ourselves. No, I will not do everything for my kids. That's unhealthy. Yes. We shouldn't do everything for our kids. So let's get rid of that idea. And then the other idea about unconditional love, we can say something like, you know, I aspire for unconditional love, but it's really hard. It's really hard because I want to own my kid. I want to possess my kid. I want to control my kid. So while I aspire to unconditional love, the honest truth is I don't think I unconditionally love anyone, including myself. Absolutely. And that's just the truth of it. Uh -huh. uh -uh. No one says it like you do, Dr. Shafali. And, you know, I, I do want to use that as a, as a segue into talking about your upcoming tour because, you know, something that um, if, if there's something that I believe I've done well in my life that my mentors, you know, drummed into me back in my 20s, um, I was actually mentored for a little while by a multi-billionaire and he said to me, Holly, nothing, no amount of reading, no amount of listening, no amount of watching videos, nothing you can do in your life will ever make up for you putting yourself in the right environment. And he talked about how, you know, I, I am the seed and my ability to express my full potential does not lie in what's contained in my seed, but it lies in my ability to place myself in the environment that can help to germinate my seed and bring that to life. And I, the reason I want to hone in on this, I experience it too with, you know, my own parenting events and online programs or whatever, um, and retreats where, you know, people will follow me for a long time they'll watch a lot of my video they'll reach out with the most deeply heartfelt beautiful messages of true gratitude for you know how something I might have offered them has changed them and I'm sure you get millions of them too but but when it comes to that parent and parent I'm, parents I'm calling you all out here we're, we're, we're not here having a cute little comfortable chat tonight 
we're talking consciousness and consciousness is almost never comfortable. So, you know, if this isn't, isn't right for you, you're welcome to leave the call. But I'm calling you forward because here we are, all of us. Oh, I love Dr. Shafali. Oh, I followed her for years. Oh, isn't she just this, you know, magical woman that's entered our lives through the universe, placing her in our path. And here we are on the other side of the planet she's flying into our country and I as a, I feel embarrassed that there are still seats left in any of your arenas Dr Shafali I am like what the hell are Australians doing oh yes parenting is it means the world to me you know like we've all just come through the two hardest years of our lives and no one has taken it harder than our children because not only have their entire school environment changed but their home environment has changed because the vibration and frequency of their parents has changed we haven't had space for our children emotionally because of what life has done to us personally over the last two years and they feel that and they've isolated themselves so much in their bedroom trying to cope with what life has done through the pandemic and here we are with an opportunity where all the borders are open where there's no restrictions where our kids have I mean we've got the highest suicide rates that have ever been seen in history and here we are saying oh I'm not sure if I if I've got the couple of hundred dollars to organize myself to be in the room with Dr Shafali I mean, there's no video you can watch that will make up for the energy that you feel when you are sitting in front of her. So what do you have to offer on that regards, Dr. Shafali? Because, you know, I know there are parents that are sitting on the line tonight that have probably been thinking about booking and haven't yet. And maybe this is their message. But if there was one thing that I could stress, you know, in alignment with my own life purpose that somehow I make a difference to a family that doesn't mean the difference comes from me what I would love is that this call made every person book a ticket and sit in front of you and truly receive what you have to offer and I feel sad wow. for the children whose parents won't do that and then they call themselves conscious parents and that's not yeah I mean criticism it's just it's just a reality yeah I think if you are a parent right now and you have ever struggled with your kid, which is every parent, or have always desired to grow more in your life or be more empowered as a woman, as a mother especially, then coming to an event is not just a visit to a store. It's not just a movie ticket or a vacation. It is investing in your life. And I think we as mothers feel really guilty taking money from the family to invest in ourselves. But if we mothers are not taking care and nurturing our souls, we will have nothing to give. We are the vanguards of our children's spiritual and emotional health. So if we don't take that job, that sacred job with, with an empowered approach, with, uh, with manifested action, then we will just be passive and we will actually suffer and our children will suffer. So I know that parents, all parents want to do better but we mothers especially have this guilt. But if you're listening right now and you want to be a better parent, then you owe it to yourself and your family owes it to you to invest in an event like mine because I teach you how to do it better. I teach you how to liberate yourself and liberate your children. This is an investment for decades. It's not coming to my pocket. I've, I've already been paid. Yes. Your video has just frozen, but I think we've still got your voice. No? Okay. Don't worry. Learning to go to your children. Oh, have we got you? Hi, did I, I lose you? Oh, you just cut out just, just for the last maybe 20 seconds. Oh, I'm sorry. Can you hear me now? Yes, we can hear you. We can't. Your video is not working, but don't. Oh, yeah. Now you are. You're back. Yeah, I'm just, my Wi-Fi goes out a second. So just give me a second and I'm yeah, going to come right it. back. I understand. On no, we, I know you're in India. You know, it, it's totally fine. Uh -huh. Hold on one second. And for those of you I'll watching, you right know, even in a moment like this, it's like, you know, just just maintaining our intention and not letting something like video shift our energy. You were, I, I feel like, you know, the uh, 
maybe the enemy that's out there that, you know, interfered with us right at a very powerful moment there. So continue what it was you were saying. No, all, all I'm, I'm calling to all moms, especially that, you know, when I, when I show up in Australia, I'm doing a tour in five cities in Australia and one in New Zealand. And the energy that is so potent and palpable when you are together with yes. other spiritual seekers, with other parents, is very different than sitting at home and watching a video. And I think that's to your point. You have to put yourself in an environment to connect to other people like you on the path. And then the healing and the growth is exponential. It, you cannot do this alone. Yes. And that's been our, our reality in the pandemic is we've been isolated. So now yes. the borders are opening. I'm coming. I'm coming to meet with hundreds of parents. So if you're a parent, join us because it will change your life. I can guarantee you, you will not leave the event the same person as you walked in. Absolutely. And do you know what? Let, let, me, let me go to one more deep question, if that's okay with you. Because sure. um, a lot of people that come to my um, online parenting program quite often will come with children. I mean, we hear more and more often children with um, autism, ADHD, sensory disorders, who who truly do communicate on a whole different level. And I've had some children, and in fact, um, one of the mothers is on the line. I just saw her right now. And she came to my program um, with her son that was only 10 years old at the time and was suicidal, has ADHD and autism, and for five years had been seeing psychologists and everything, like every fortnight for five years years and it got to a point where you know they said hey look there's probably not much more we can do for him we're probably going to have to medicate him and that's where she looked for more answers and you know we crossed paths that night and you know she became in the program and and six weeks later this child came to life like I'm talking he went from looking like he didn't exist inside himself to being full of life loving himself and you know all that and the reason I'm saying that is because a lot of what I would teach is about soul work like not working on a child's mind all the time not finding new ways to manipulate them mentally to get them to listen to you but truly coming back to a place where you know, you parent your child through a filter of connection, not control. And you were talking about, you know, the collective consciousness and the power of, you know, the, everyone coming together, spiritual seekers. And I say this because a lot of these parents that come with, you know, children who are on the spectrum, I mean, we have some very real vulnerable conversations in my group and they will open so honestly and say, i if I was to be really honest, I feel like I don't even like my child. Like I, I know I love them, but but it hurts my heart to feel like I, I hate them sometimes. Like there's, I don't even know what I like about them. They're just an inconvenience. They ruin my life. I can't do anything. They, I'm just a failure, you know, on every level. So what can you offer for parents, whether they're at the point where they're willing to admit that or not, but who, who if they were so real with themselves could admit, there's a big part of me that actually feels like I barely even like my child. Like I struggle that much. And it's, it's, it's beyond behavior. Like we're talking an energy connection now. What would you have to offer to those parents and, the, and, and, and what's the journey behind that parent-child relationship? Well, I think for that parent, and, and that's not typical only for children who are uh, on the spectrum. Correct. For most parents who experience a dissonance with their children, what's coming up is that their fantasy is not coming true. Right. They are feeling like failures because they expect it to feel like successes. They thought that when they have a kid, they're going to feel good about themselves. It's going to check a box on their list. Then when you get a kid who's got chronic health issues or, or on the spectrum or whatever, they're not really that extraordinary, you feel like it's a personal attack on you. So what we do in conscious parenting is we teach parents that this is not about you. You are not here to get glory through your child. You are not here to be the perfect parent. But you see, the setup is that we thought we would be yeah. the perfect parent. We thought we would get glory. So it's, it's really a tough job. It's a, it's, it's a really, you know, no one told me it was nonstop. I didn't think about it being a lifelong job. I didn't think about it being a 365, 24-7 kind of job. No one really tells us that 
parenting that way, what the parent needs to come to terms with is that they, they, they need to understand that this is going to be hard. There is no A plus grade. There is no trophy and there's no perfection. So let go. Don't resist the reality of the hardship. Accept it. And the minute you accept it, you can begin to change it. You can begin to improve it. But the reason that parents say they don't like their kid more than you know the average parent would say is because their expectations, their fantasies, none of it is coming true. And they've identified their worth as being a parent. So if they could wow. disidentify their worth and say, and, and, and if they could say to themselves, oh, did I lose you again? We can hear you. Your video has stopped, but your voice is perfect. Okay, sweetie. So if the video comes back, it comes back. So we just yeah, flow with it. Fine. Um, so you see, as parents, we've identified our worth as being a good parent. So when the kid makes us feel unworthy, we feel like we have failed. And that's what is the hard part about having challenging situations with our children. That is profound. I, I see that completely. It's like we lose our whole identity in what hasn't happened because of what we had built a fantasy would happen. So it's not even that we don't like the child. It's almost like we're in a grieving process for what we feel yes. like we have lost. Yes, exactly. It's the expectations we came with that have not been, you know, that have not manifested. And that's devastating to us. So adjusting to the reality of who our children are versus who we wanted them to be, that is half the battle. Right. And our children can't live authentic lives until we are in a position where we can hold a space for whatever that journey may be, right? Yes, exactly. So this is what this work teaches us is how to become authentic with ourselves so that when we become authentic with ourselves, we will free our children to live in their authentic truth. That is profound. That is just profound. Dr. Shafali, I like, thank you. I, I, I could sit here and talk to you for another three hours. I know you've probably get, got to get some sleep at some point. I know you're catching flights very soon, but um, I did just want to give everyone one opportunity. We've got like five minutes left. If you do have a very specific question, um, you can put it in the chat box and also all of the details of uh, Dr. Shafali's events in Australia are being shared in the chat box. If you haven't already seen by Flourish and Co., Everything you need is there. What I am going to do here, parents, honestly, I, I want I want you, I'm gonna, I want to invite you all just for this moment, truly, to lean in to your own vulnerability. And I want you to just, you know, put your swords down, drop your guards, and truly open your heart space. Because I, I I'm sure we would all align, which is why we're all here together, on the fact that. You know, for Dr. Shafali to make herself available to us, I'm talking the drop of a hat. I wrote an email to her team yesterday and it was Easter, a long weekend. And, um, and then this morning I had a reply from her team and they and I've actually got to go in for surgery tomorrow. And they said, well, let's do it tonight. Dr. Shafali has told us to squeeze you in and here we are, it's happening. And so, you know, we all like to pride ourselves on being people who give back to people who give so much to us. Honestly, just consider for a moment, you know, where the those pivotal shifts have occurred in your life and in your parenting and in how you show up as a parent, as a person, as a partner, because of a video you saw of Dr. Shafali's, because of a book, you, her book you might have read, or because of something you've heard here tonight. And so I, and this isn't even just to be nice to Dr. Shafali, this is from my heart to yours. I'm calling all of us forward to honestly sit in the presence of the question, why haven't I booked yet? And I want you to truly consider if you haven't already got your tickets, why? And if it's money, then, I, you know, I, 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 and like the Australian culture, Dr. Shavali, hopefully you like Aussies just as much when you leave as you do before you get here. <laughs> but, you know, oh, we, I'm sure I will. we have a strange culture on, on, on a lot of levels. You know, honestly, we won't bat an eyelid to go down to the pub and drop $100 or, you know, hang out with friends. There's a real Aussie mate culture that we won't think twice about. But when it comes to something that truly 
and, and this is to not use these words lightly, but truly has the potential to shift the entire trajectory of our lives and the lives of our children, we sit back and we question it. And, you know, we go into debt for anything else, but you know, when it's something that's truly aligned with our deepest values, I don't know what it is, but, you know, we struggle to make, you know, some cold, hard decisions on it. So I'm calling us all out. Like Dr. Tavali put a time aside for us tonight. And I feel like, you know, as a, as a measure of gratitude, but more just just the, the opportunity to be in your presence, Dr. Shafali. And I know your ability to connect with an audience just through the screen, you know, let, I can only imagine what it would be like. And I can't wait till you're here in Adelaide, um, you know, to be in the presence of that environment that you can create and that safety that I know you build in your audiences. I've had friends attend your international events and they've just said the safety is just next level. Like I got to levels of my own voice vulnerability and layers were just shedding off me because it just felt like everyone was really there together and um you know that's just an environment that opens so much for all of us and it's not something you can get through a screen and it's not just about getting information I feel like the world is too full of information it's I mean we've got a readily available planet for information what we need is transformation but transformation doesn't happen without a frequency or a vibration that can match it and I know that we will find that inside every room that you are in here in Australia. So I look forward to seeing you on tour. Um, I put my trust in everybody that's on the line that they will be seeing you when you are on tour. And if there was anything you did want to add, I'm going to quickly look at the questions. But if there was anything you wanted to add about your tour, I, I would love to open up that space for you to share. No, just that I'm so excited. And you're right. If there is a transformation that occurs when you're in the presence of others, of sisters and brothers who are walking the path. And that is inestimable. It is the best gift you can give your children, the gift of your presence, the gift of your wholeness and the gift of your own evolution. So that's what I'm gonna teach you. And uh, as you said, I don't know when I will come back. So this is a once in a lifetime opportunity for me and for you to grow together. So I hope I see you there. So amazing. We have a question. I'm actually going to use the one just because I happen to share. Maybe the universe had a plan behind this. Uh, I happen to share that story about that little boy. And his mum has actually made a comment. She said, how do I disidentify from my worth as a parent? Like my child is completely transformed and I love it. But I still do really hold my parenting as a measure of my worth. This mother is also a school teacher. And uh, she's very aware that her worth is attached. So she's saying, I get that that's what I need to do. But how how do I do that? How do I disidentify? Oh, wait, we've lost your voice. Hang on. No, we, you, we've lost your sound. Now your video is working and your sound wasn't. And my Wi-Fi said got it's you. Wrong. We've got you okay, now. Okay, okay. Sorry, okay. start again. Can you hear? Can you hear me well, though? You can yes. hear me okay? Yes. Oh, no, maybe not. Can you hear me? Hold the line, guys. This, this will be worth. I'm sure a lot of you, I saw a, a couple of you have asked. I'm right here. I'm got right you. here. We're can with you. Hear you. Me? Yes, we've got you. No, you are yep. all right. Oh, yes. Can you hear me? Yeah, perfect. Uh, okay, so the, the, the first step in the how to disidentify is to understand that that identification was a lie. You were never meant to get your worth as a parent. You were meant to get your worth from yourself and you were meant to connect to yourself first. But because we never learned to do that, we thought our children would complete us. We thought our partners would complete us this is a lie we've been misled so the first th thing to do is to intellectually uh, intellectually understand that that belief that my work depends on my child's performance or my child's success is a complete lie it doesn't it absolutely doesn't even if your child was the most successful even if your child was the most brilliant the world's top skier or whatever linguist 
you would still feel unworthy because worth is never found in the outside relationship. It is only found on the inside. So the second step is then, oh, okay, how do I find my worth on the inside? Ah, now you are beginning the true path of the seeker who realizes, oh, I've been looking for love and worth in all the wrong places. And I was supposed to always look within myself. And I thought my kid would give it to me. And thank goodness my kid is not giving it to me because now I'm forced to go find it for yes. myself. And then you go on this, on this path, on this journey of self-growth and self-development. Wow. Oh, I feel that. You give me goosebumps. Well, as much as we would all love to stay here, I mean, there are comments, lots of people are asking about um, all the different events and, um, and everyone is just sharing so much gratitude for you, Dr. Shafali, but I won't keep you any longer. Um, I, I, you know, I really, from the whole of my heart, I, I know we've only just met. I feel like I know you. So um, thank you for your uh, warmth and your openness. Thank you. Thank you. And I hope I see you somewhere. I'll see you in Adelaide, I hope. And I hope I see the rest of you along the other cities. Thank you for having me and spreading the word. Bye, everyone. Tell your friends. Even if you can't come, tell your other mommy friends to come. Yes, absolutely. And share it all. We will definitely be doing thank that. You, thank, thank you for you. who you are. Perfect. Thank you. Bye. And thanks to all of you who have joined us and added your energy to this call. Um, it was, yeah, it was absolutely an honor. So I will, this will be on the, on all of our social media platforms right now. So if you do want to watch the replay or share it with somebody, you can. Um, yeah, please, please share. You know, I feel like this is an opportunity that we really can give back to Dr. Shivali, even if it is just to share. And you never know when you share, you know, that's like the seed that you get to spread in, in the world and maybe you aren't the person that can stand on the stage and change a family's life but maybe it was your seed that was planted on someone else's Facebook wall just as they were scrolling that ended up being the reason that they put themselves in that room and it's your name that shows up in their sentences years to come when they look back and say hey what changed the whole of my relationship was that event I went to and if my friend would have never shared that event I would never have been in that room. So do not underestimate your own power in this, um, you know, not just as a, as a means of gratitude for Dr. Shafali, but in also the gift that you have to be able to offer to another family, whether you know them. Sometimes, you know, isn't it funny on Facebook and things like that? Sometimes you'll, you'll get comments from people you don't even know. You're like, I don't even, I don't even know you on my friends list and you thanked me for something I shared last month or something. So um, yeah, never underestimate the power we all have. We don't have to be Dr. Shafali to be able to have her impact. How we have her impact is by putting people in the room in front of her and the impact's the same. So thank you to all of you. Um, if you do want to connect with me personally, you can connect through uh, Facebook is the best way, through Facebook Messenger or through uh, the Holly Effect Facebook page. Otherwise, um, look, I'm going to leave you with this. You know, parenting, like she said, it is hard. It's certainly, you know, it's certainly far from easy and we are all doing our best navigating our way through, you know, the mess, <laughs> the mess of life that, that we call parenting. So if there was anything that I could wish for you, it would be courage. Courage is what I wish for people and, and, and particularly parents because it takes courage to look at layers we don't want to look at. It takes courage to own it and to show up day after day in the midst of our triggers, in the, in the, in the midst of our wound, you know, without all of that. It takes so much courage to be able to sit in that, to be able to go and apologise to our child for a reaction that we knew what didn't come from an aligned place it takes courage to continue showing up for ourselves so that we can change how we show up as a parent and so as you depart from here today please depart from here with courage the courage to believe in a better way the courage to voice what you've got to say the courage to thrive when times are tough and above all else the courage to know you are good enough good night everyone <laughs>